Orchard one. So Orchard one, uh, Benedict has been working on the release, so we can ship. Uh, yes, uh, I have upgraded a couple of uh, Nougat packages um, according to GitHub recommendations, and there's one more that needs some attention, but I. Uh, it requires some discussion because it involves, it might involve uh, changing some functionality that was developed by Sipka, so I, I'd rather ask his opinion on it. Other than that, uh, one time free is, is really ready. So I, uh, I still owe us some documentation regarding the compilation stuff and uh, C sharp language version configuration and things like that. But yeah. Okay. So that's that's needed for one ten three, and then there's a, I don't know, fifteen, fifteen issues, maybe twenty. I don't know, assigned to one dot eleven. So that will, uh, that will be the next kind of milestone to okay. fix all those, and then one eleven can also be shipped. Good. Thank you. Awesome. Um, okay. And then what should call. Check out this one. Mike, Ike, and whatever will do a demo beauty here. So, 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 so I will filter on origin dev. Just to see what has been merged in the past week. Um, let's see, modify default user claims principle factory to include role claims to as a bug fix. Then GraphQL descriptions and name changes. So now in GraphQL, um, the names and descriptions are better. Uh, one main, one major change is that when you would filter previously an auto route part, now you will just say auto route to remove the part, and each part can define its own display name. That's a big change, and also the descriptions are um, translated now, localized. So we will be able to localize uh, the descriptions also on, on uh, GraphQL. Um, yep. Fixed content type query description fixes on the previous request. Run recipe. Run recipe and non recipe migrations in the same scope. There was a bug when you were using the the new recipe migration uh, and scopes. Now it's fixed by Chantieri. Allow any content type for create content task. Yep. So now in the workflow, create content item task. You can select something that is not createable. Creatable being used usually to be able to list on the new um, menu item. Fix dynamic part field resolution for GraphQL. Okay. Fix the invalid password flow label on OpenID server settings. A low password flow and not implicit flow. Expose IDB connection 3i. So now you can resolve an IDB connection. Okay, there is an IDB connection um, accessor to do that, like the IHTP context accessor or the other accessors. There is still a PR open to fix a, a bug, but I'll, I'll see into that. Um, What has he done? Why didn't I see a PR for that? I will not have... Okay, that's weird. 
Okay, I thought I had I, I done the change button different branch, the one here, so it did that before, and there were no merge issues, so that's okay. It's just amazing. So we need to use the dot razor uh, SDK when we are creating modules with views, and this way the views will be recompiled. If you don't have views, you can use this directly to the .sdk, and there will be no precompiled views uh, assembly. Fix typos in tenants module. Here cannot contain more than one segment. Okay. Okay. This merge this morning. This is about using um, .NET. Ah, oh, how did I not fix that? I was sure I fixed it. That's weird. I'm sure I fixed it. How is that possible? So I merged it, whatever. That works, that's okay, it's preview 3, so I need to change the CI to use uh, the final bits, but in the end that's the same thing in terms, it's just to build the packages, so they will still rely on your local SDK, that's okay. Um, so we merged the 2.2 branch, which means we are using the netcore 2.2, and if you want to use the dev branch now, you will need to install the, the new SDK, okay? Which version is 2.2.100. Um, some changes, so in this sense, now we need to target netcore up to 2, and, 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 if I look at the module templates, um, module templates, Nope, nothing. So when we reference MVC, I'm referencing to 2.0. Um, I removed temporarily the my get feed from the NuGet uh, config, just to be sure we are not using any package from my get and just NuGet.org. This way we can match to master safely. Everything will be on NuGet and it works. Uh, it's got also lots of updated um, libraries which are in this project, so updated fluid with Hungarian fix and others, uh, new gint for performance and bug fixes, um, new markdig, this one I don't know what it does, this one I don't know but it was a minor release, all the minor releases I updated without thinking, this one was not updated by me. I don't like to update major things if there is no reason. Um, image sharp was updated to the beta 005 and there were branching changes so I fixed that, them and I checked everything was working fine. Um, YAML new minor change and yes, SQL new changes that were required but we were using my get before. So it's using the new get version now. Um, and that's it for to two, I think. Okay, um, updating the readme just to copy what we have in documentation because here it's just saying re-implementation of Orchard CMS and now I'm matching what we have in documentation. Uh, merge this one from Antoine uh, who updated Gulp to Gulp 4.0. And I sh so he, he said he, and he fixed all the the um, migration issues. I want one. You tested to rebuild everything that it was working. Um, yeah, I used it to make a Gulp watch and change. A... Okay, it's just that with this change, I didn't see any asset which was updated, and I would have expected some assets to be updated. But see, because there are new versions of Uglyfy and. TypeScript, so I don't know. That's weird, yeah, so. But I trust you. And then the last one, fixes in Gulp. Yeah. I only tested Gulp watch. Okay, that's, yeah, that's my concern then. We to test Gulp build. Um, so the last one, fixes in correct selection of content type node on blog recipe. Uh, 
uh, menu item selection persistence. Um, then if I remove the filter to see what branches are worked on, uh, seven days, seven days, we have a distributed branch from Chantiri, but we merge after we ship beta 3. Routable, that again, I worked after, I work on after beta 3 also. Um, this is Nick uh, trying to create some settings for GraphQL in the parts and types to be able to change the display names. Um, and this is render, which is a branch that uh, that tries to implement a render uh, property in GraphQL, so we can use GraphQL to render a content item. Um, the way it works is, um, let me quickly show you the goal of this branch. Uh, so when you do a blog post in GraphQL and then you do display text, okay, something like that. So the idea is that now you can do render and the result of render will be the HTML of rendering this blog post, uh, including the layout. I intend to add features like um, layout for something like that so we can have no layout and display type summary so we can render this as a summary. And and uh, I started actually before to work on a display URL. So now it should work. So display URL should work, but it's not yet in the branch. So we can get the display URL of the blog post. Um, and by doing that, so it works now. Uh, Shantari fixed all the things that were missing. Um, by doing that, we will be able to do some uh, static site generation, um, even with a full CMS. Uh, or even without a full CMS, because from a client script, you will be able to ask for all the blog posts and their render thing. And you can even get the display URL or the auto route path. Um, and this way, we can generate local static files with the content as they will be rendered. There, there will be, there, it will need more things and more process, processors, but that, that's a, a start to have this kind of support that will be that will allow things like this. Or even from client applications like um, mobile applications, uh, which just wants to get some rendered HTML to display in a mobile app, that will also be possible. Um, that, that should open some possibilities. And that was uh, kind of easy to do. And it had us um, think about how we were displaying the things and how much razor concepts were all over the rendering engine that we refactored. So we don't have that. And now it's beautiful. For instance, there is no more iDisplay uh, helper factory. We can just have a resolve an iDisplay helper and do um, render, but something like that. And you pass a shape, and that's it. Before we need a view context, well, a display context which had a view context, and so so many things. Now it's much easier. Um, even for generating emails, for instance, uh, Antoine, if you look at your code to generate uh, email templates, you will see just one line of code now. There is no more need, no more need for twenty lines of code to generate a view context. That's it. Um, I was, I was, I was here. And um, demos, 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 um, topics. But first, uh, demos. Uh, Matthias, I will make you a presenter. Michael, do you want to present? Matthias will start, but I. Not sure. Yes, sir. Thank you. But much as we start then. Can you see my screen? Not yet. Um, not yet. Not yet. Are you, did you click on sharing? Because I'm still sharing, so you didn't kick me out. Click again on sharing. Okay, now I'm kicked out and and I can see your screen. I can see. And I think everyone can see now. Yeah, everyone can see. So you're good to go. 
Okay, the, the idea is to add a new editor for the media field um, to solve a special use case where, the, where we don't want that the user has to mess up with the uh, browser, with, the, with this. I, I will rephrase that. Saying yes. that it's a media Thank field <laughs> that lets you manage the media per content item, and they are isolated in the navigation. So you don't see them in navigation; they are in only editable from the content item. a media field because we still reference media items yes. but yes. a new editor yes standard or limited yeah we'll change the name <laughs> but that's okay <laughs> so you are not using the latest dev branch because uh, i changed the title to always be at the top by default yes okay. it's not the latest normally we have a uh, the standard we have this button here so we can browse the the assets the media and in the limited one we have an upload button so we upload the images here and it's orchard take care of the handling of uh, the files that you upload here so example That's it. And uh, how is this handled? I created a, a folder to the So wouldn't it still make sense to be able to select images and clone them on the content item? Because I can drag and drop an image, but why can't I select an image from the public media? The idea is to to have, uh, for example, the, the, the scenario will be where you have uh, an admin user, and then you have uh, editors that also have uh, permission to to go here. Okay, so this is different then. This is not just having content item images, it's also, yeah, but. Yes, it's letting the, the system archer take care of the. Do we have a permission? Do we have a permission for the, the asset management? I think we have a permission for asset management. So if we had the permission to manage assets, maybe we should be able also to pick from these assets. I added a new permission. Later, I will show you okay. how how it works. But yeah, even if I added a new permission, that's independent. Okay, well, that's that's a feature we can improve. But okay, go. Okay, the, the files. How how the files uh, work? Uh, when I add a file here, and the file is uh, is uploaded to the temp folder. If I click publish. It could be moved to to a folder here, who has the the name of the content item we are editing. In this case, open. What well, is this, this one? I split the deep line following your suggestion the other day. So we have a we don't have a long list of deals here on the file is here. In case uh, a user creates uh, a content item 
and upload an image here. Um, later, the image is here in the, if the user leaves the, the page without publishing the content item, the image is here. So I added a, a background task yeah. so that this removed after a few minutes. Is that what we talked about last time? Yes. I added a setting here so that you can set uh, how many time, how many minute, minutes or days you want the temp files to be here. And after that time, uh, the files are removed, are pushed. Now I am uh, an admin, so I can see the media fields here. If I log out, uh, log in as a limited editor, I can't see these files here. The, the media fields folder is hidden because of the permission I, I talked about. And that is it. Okay. I'll comment on the PR. Now that's nice. Yeah. I just have a few comments. Background task, the, the settings. Um, maybe we need to look at the name of the folder. How many segments you have in the? Yes, I. You know, but that's okay. That's that's yeah. You had, you had to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. And we talked about it already. So to explain why we have so many folders is that if only had one folder, and we go to like a million content items with a media field for each of them, then the file system might be limited in the number of files you can have on a folder. So by doing that, we are spreading the the files over as many combinations as you have the uh, common um, folder names or file names sorry um, and actually actually yeah I said it was a content item ID but hmm. maybe that's wrong maybe it should be the f file name I don't know. I have to check. But yeah, so we need to split the the file in in different folders to to so we don't hit the limit of the the files in a specific folder. Yeah, or maybe we just need to hash and to use a hash that has like six chars and use these chars. This way, it will be more. Uh, reusable because here I'm afraid we'll have uh, no we can't have the same 26 20 times 26 on the first one then 26 and then time 26 and so on okay I should be fine yeah. we'll look at it that's fine that it's just an algorithm to change maybe um, good good questions Did I miss any question in the chat I didn't miss any question in the chat um, Michael, Michael, Michael. Michael, hi. Michael, thank you. You didn't. You already said that to me, but I forgot all the time. <laughs> okay. And you can share the screen when you need. Okay. Okay, uh, we have a Microsoft uh, authentication story. Yeah. <laughs> if you want something, if anyone needs something, just ask Michael. He will, he'll make it for you. So I wanted Microsoft authentication. I asked him. I did it. <laughs> it's very full. You don't have to ask Santa. It won't work. But you can ask Michael. <laughs> 
uh, Daphne Fair. Is it presenting? Yes, everyone can see. Ah, okay. Okay, I have a, a, an Orchard instance uh, with a tenant one. Let's log in. So, completely unrelated question. Uh, do you know uh, Sotiris? Who? Sotiris or Sotirios Russos? Ah, uh, no, no. You are both Greek. <laughs> So maybe I maybe I thought you would know each other, but okay, that's fine. You can go. On. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, let's start with uh, the Microsoft uh, uh, account. Uh, there is uh, uh, the registration uh, portal, so you have to create an application here. Uh, Okay, we will need the application ID. Uh, we must add the platform uh, web platform, implicit flow, and uh, enter the URL that we, the middleware will uh, listen. In our case, it is. And one. Okay, and uh, we need to create a password also. Okay. Uh, we allow the user in order to get the email, etc. Uh, nothing else here, say. Okay. In our admin. We must enable the registration if we, if we want a new user to register on the site. Otherwise, uh, an existing account could link his uh, external uh, ID. And also Microsoft. Microsoft account of education. Okay. Shouldn't the Microsoft account no. be, re be depending on registration? I assume no. You can log in without registering or do you have to be able to register to log in? Uh, no, you can log in without registering if you have a local account and log in in the... Because uh, you, okay, you, you, okay, so you enable registration to be able to add a new user, that's why. Yes, okay. yes, that's why. Okay, uh, so here you must... Okay allow users to create new accounts, save. And you have to configure the Microsoft account. Makes sense. <laughs> okay, Here we have the, the application ID. The secret. Okay, and I have uh, wrong uh, uh, configured uh, callback. I will leave it the default sign in Microsoft, and I will modify the the site here. I didn't. Okay, now we are ready. <coughs> Uh, look off. Now we have the Microsoft account uh, 
provide it. Haha, <laughs> you don't know your password. What? What? Okay, yes. I just got the, the ID for your next feature. It's beautiful. <laughs> um, now you have to register because uh, there is no uh, name in the claims that we could uh, retrieve uh, okay. the proposed username. You must add one. Uh, and then you password, of course. Uh, the user now has no access to dashboard. Uh, we don't have a story to add the default roles on uh, new users. I, mm -hmm. I think. We, okay, so yes, it, it probably should be a workflow. Uh, log off. Login with admin. Security users. So we have the OC demo, and uh, you can edit the password. Maybe we shouldn't uh, request for a password from uh, the user registration and uh, force uh, a password change from the user admin. Uh, for a new user with external uh, account. Yep, I agree. Anyway, uh, now... Uh, and by the, the way, the, the API doesn't require it. You can not provide a password if you want. I think it will just generate a that's random one. Mm -hmm. That's why I say that, uh, because the, maybe the user should uh, just be able to see some content on the, for, on the front and uh, no access uh, here. Or, I don't know. Uh, okay, uh, now let me log off from here and go to the default panel. Uh, here I will configure the uh, Microsoft Active Directory. and uh, create an open ID server and allow the, the tenant to log in from uh, this instance through, open, through Azure Active Directory or uh, the local users. Okay. Let's enable Active Directory. And now we must go to the uh, Azure Active Directory. I have created the Norcard demo tenant. Why don't we get a nice Azure icon? Uh, I will check. I will check. That's my task. Okay, go on. I will check if we have a nice Azure icon. <laughs> okay. Uh, and now we must create an app registration. If you go with the preview, maybe it's better. And so the preview uh, app registration. Uh, so you can choose if uh, it will be only from the Orca demo or uh, from uh, like a business to consumer active directory from an organization or uh, from personal accounts, from personal Microsoft accounts. Uh, local host. Sign in. Open ID. 
connect. This is the default uh, we use. Okay, so we need the uh, the client ID, the application ID from here. We need the directory, the tenant ID. And leave the callback uh, path as it is. Okay. Uh, now, I can go here, external logins. And for the admin, it use the test org or the ID that we just set up. And the uh, login. The password. Okay, if you set the application from the new, uh, from the preview, uh, you don't have the uh, ID token, so you must go to the authentication and enable the ID tokens in the implicit grant. Otherwise, if you create the application from the, not from the preview, but from the app registrations, this is by default. Okay. So we linked admin account with the Azure Active Directory account. Is that a new screen? Uh, it existed uh, with the APR uh, that uh, made uh, some time oh, ago okay. uh, on the, uh, with the KOI OpenID Connect client, I think. Okay. Uh, now in the admin, uh, we could uh, enable uh, an OpenID server for this tenant and try to log in from the other tenant through the Azure Active Directory from this tenant. Yeah, I see. But I, if I wanted to have authentication without OpenID um, server, we, do, have it. we could also yeah. do it. Yeah, but just for the demonstration because it supports OpenID, that's nice. Okay. Uh, maybe we we'll demonstrate it some other time this one. That's okay. Uh, I just want. No, that's a very, very nice idea. That's good. Okay, let me log in. Uh, now I log in with the Azure Active Directory as admin. Yeah. Because, okay, so. Because you can. <laughs> <laughs> because I can, correct. <laughs> okay, so configuration, uh, modules. Uh, yeah, we can go with the authorizer support flow. flow. Let's create an application.
بقل خوز I think we don't need the scopes. Okay, log off. Uh, let's go to ten and one. Ah, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. Export. Configuration modules, open ID connect client. Our also defined client ID. Uh, I think we had put this one. Signing open ID connect is the default. Okay, scopes. Uh, we will need the email scope in order to link a user with uh, uh, the connected user, and we use the code application flow. Client secret, secret, save. Okay, so go. I will log in as admin, but uh, I will go through the test order of the Active Directory we created before. That is a linked account to the admin on the, the orchard the host. So now the orchard, the, the orchard host uh, requests my permission. Yes. So it found the admin local host on the orchard host uh, instance. It proposed the uh, username and it requests my password in order to link that account with uh, my local account. So now if I go to external logins, I have the OpenID Connect linked to the admin account. Okay. Do you listen? Yep, that's beautiful. <laughs> okay. But we will need a, you will need to write a book to explain how to how to configure <laughs> it. <laughs> no, that makes sense. Everything makes sense. That's great. I, I, okay. I hope uh, Kevin will be able to see it also. Yes, <laughs> because all this work is uh, Kevin, uh, Open ID Connect server. Somehow, a little. <laughs> Not everything. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> From the Open ID Connect server. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank, thanks to you. Thank, uh, thank you. Question, Sergeant, okay. Uh, Thanks a lot. Bye bye. So I checked the doc the documentation you wrote is nice, but doesn't have all these details. We'll need a blog post somewhere, or some more screenshots to explain how to configure AAD. So maybe not the, the Open ID story is different. That that deserves a, its own documentation section, but at least to configure the. Also, as uh, I was speaking, we have a, a, a Microsoft authentication permission, we have a Facebook uh, login permission, we have an open ID. Maybe all the authentication, the client authentication should be on... That's fine, yeah, we could do that, his own section, yeah? Uh, but uh, this, this also is nice because you have Facebook and you enable the Facebook login. You have yeah. Microsoft and you enable the Microsoft product. And yeah. I don't know. Maybe let's we should discuss it. Yeah, and I'd like also to have to be able to manage the um, linked 
accounts from the admin. I don't think we have a, a view for that to to list and revoke for each user each user the the linked account. No, no, no. Uh, the user can. Uh, do. Yeah, that's why I was surprised to see this screen. I didn't remember we had this screen. Uh, and probably because I never use the default theme that shows the, the link. We don't have these links on the other ones. Uh, and, 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 yeah, so, at the end, that, that's nice. And also the option to be able to, to register without setting a password. That should be fine. And even if we don't want to set a password, we can always go later on that because we can say reset password and go back to the screen to change the password. Correct, and uh, we have also the request uh, an email verification in order to be able to log in. All this is, is a nice uh, story. Mm -hmm. uh, you can uh, register and then uh, you will get the email and then change your password. Yep, that was great. Now it's done. Oh my god, AD and Microsoft account and Facebook. So, what's left? Twitter, GitHub. <laughs> <laughs> Everything. <laughs> yeah, but well, once we have the three of them the, here, the Facebook, the uh, MSA, and AAD, having the the GitHub and Twitter, they should be super easy to do, right? Because they are even easier to implement. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. We'll see. It's not. It's just that. Yeah. The Microsoft ones make sense. You started with Facebook because you decided to start with Facebook. The Microsoft one makes sense for me because we might want to host Microsoft services and they will require uh, open um, open uh, AD and MSA uh, but yeah the next one yeah that, that's super nice awesome thanks a lot okay thank you beautiful bye bye <laughs> thanks. and now bye. you now you can talk to a soterist to say hi because he's also <laughs> a very very important Orchard contributor more more on Orchard one but uh, yeah as much as you so that's good so, uh, I, I, I know you speak in Greek, yes, <laughs> Okay. Uh, does anyone have questions? Kamia, let me see. Kalispera. Kalispera. Okay, we'll leave them alone. And <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so no questions, no questions. Um, Topics, 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 topics. Uh, so we talked about raising 1103, and uh, next we will release oh, 1103, and also uh, talking about beta 3. So the what was blocking beta 3? I wanted to schedule it with um, netcore .net core 2.2, which has shipped. So now my goal is to work exclusively on shipping beta 3, which means. I don't expect anyone to write uh, any new features, but I won't block you from writing any features. They won't just make it in the dev branch. They will, well, they will make it in the dev branch, but I will create a beta 3 branch to be sure nothing goes in beta 3 that is not targeting to ship beta 3. Um, and I expect, um, I, I tr well, you see, I tried to look for a, an Azure icon on uh, Fontosum. I couldn't find one. Uh, going back to Orchard Core. I hope that we can uh, work on um, on 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 P zero P one issues. Um, P zero uh, okay, it works now. Sorry, P zero P one issues. We have P zero issues. All of these are mostly super simple to fix, just little bugs, but we need to fix them for beta 3 because they, they are very bad bugs. Uh, and I'm sure half of them are not actually bugs. They, maybe they have been fixed or we can't repro, they are full pos false positive. Um, so we have P0 and P1 issues that are blocking beta 3, uh, about uh, 15 issues, but they should be easily fixed. Um, and 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 we also have lots of them which are still milestone for. That's not where I need to click. For beta three. Um, again, lots of. Why did it? No, I need to remove that. Lots of them are maybe not accurate, and we need to close them. Uh, there are 127, but the ones that are not P0, P1, so minus label. P0 minus label P1. If I know how to type, 
type 115 um, and lots of them are documentation which are easy to do and most of them also are just will I point them for the next release they are not very important they are not blocking beta 3 but I will do a triage probably on Thursday to, to see what how to reorganize them um, so right now we just need to focus on P0, P1 um, and if you can adopt a bug that would be great and probably just start by uh, commenting on the issue saying you are looking into it so that two, two people are not working the same one and trying to to reproduce the issue because sometimes there is no actual issue and we just need to close it because it has been fixed or it was it was a wrong report um, yeah, and if you want to work on documentation also that's nice as people do documentation, look, Michael wrote a feature and documentation. It's beautiful. Wow, uh, respect. <laughs> no, that's easy. That's easy. It's integrating your source code so that we can just commit a markdown file or add a section to an existing one. Super easy. It's beautiful. Uh, um, yep, good. Look at that. We are 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, almost 12. I take three bugs, you take one each, and then we are done. Beautiful. With beta 3, you can ship beta 3. Um, PRs, there are not that, I don't think any of them, or maybe a bug fix, will make it in beta 3. Uh, we'll see on triage Thursday. But if there is a risk it's breaking something, or it can add bugs, then we won't take it. After all, we can. We still work on the dev branch, and it, as soon as we ship on beta 3, it will go on the dev branch, that's not an issue. So they will be merged mostly on the dev branch and not on the beta 3 branch. Um, yeah. Questions? Also test it. Something you can do if you don't want to fix a bug is to test the dev branch because we merged 2.2. That might break some things. There is, I know something we need to check which is are we able to edit a view when we are in dev mode and it will pick it up automatically I'm not sure because I'm not sure if and same thing for Razor and Liquid because the default behavior changed in 2.2 um, but maybe we were doing it using our own file providers so we have to check that for sure uh, I tried the image sharp um, to be sure it was working because I know it was a big, big breaking change and we by the past have broken it every time we took a new image sharp version so now that there is no issue I checked it so if you want to test things that feel free to do it that will help a lot um, and that's it questions then everything is good see you on Thursday for um, triage and if not this week, which I assume we won't manage to do, ship beta 3 for next Tuesday. Thanks everyone, see you next week. See ya, bye.